Okay, so today we're going to be speaking about how we can uh, understand. If I gave you a piece of material, let's say it looked like this, a nice block, and I asked you, is this material ferroelectric or not? You know how would be how would you be able to tell? Obviously, if it's piezoelectric, or at least macroscopically, you could press on it, and you should get some type of charge and voltage developed as well. However, how do we tell the specific trait of ferroelectricity? What is the phenomenon which governs its ability to be identified and characterized? So today we're going to be going over that, and that is none other than analyzing the polarization versus electric field uh, curve. So for a typical capacitor, if we have, you know, charge on this side, and we have electric field applied, or let's say voltage applied, huh? So if we apply that electric field and voltage, what we're going to get Assuming it's a ideal capacitor, you know, Q equals CV, we'll get some type of slope here. And this slope here is going to be the capacitance. Q over V equals C, right? The slope is the capacitance of the system. With, uh, when we characterize our piezoelectric or, I mean, ferroelectric materials or dielectric materials, for example, uh, rather, uh, we don't talk about uh, charge, we talk about polarization, it's basically charge divided by area equals polarization. And voltage, we don't talk about voltage because that's sort of a microscopic um, approach or a sample related uh, quantity, it's not a uh, material related quantity, you know, volts per meter or electric field, you know, divide by the, by the length and we get the electric field here. So when we're going to be talking about our ferroelectric materials, we're going to talk about polarization versus electric field because you could be making this material as tall as you want, as uh, uh, you know, as wide as you want, with as much area as you would like, but you but the properties of the material won't change. However, the properties of the sample may change, but not the not the properties of the intrinsic property of the material itself. <laughs> so using polarization and electric field, we can characterize the intrinsic quote unquote behavior of the piezoelectric material. <clears throat> so also um, when we so what does the polarization electric field diagram look like for a, for a ferroelectric material so under low excitation you know obviously I, I mentioned we're going to be we're at, we in, in real life we apply a voltage we don't technically apply an electric field sort of and if you don't apply a polarization we or you don't result in a polarization. What we actually see and measure is charge. So when you measure the polarization electric field for a low power case where you're not, you don't have a large electric field applied, it's going to behave so, like a linear capacitor type behavior. Assuming that you have this beautiful material and it's, uh, let's say it looks like a square or it looks like a disc and it has electrodes on top and bottom and you're hooking it up to some system and you're testing the polarization electric field characteristics so if you test it under low voltage you're just going to get a linear uh, type of response however if you increase the response you're going to be getting a very different behavior a nonlinear behavior so you have this plot and keep in mind it's going to be with a larger electric field So again, uh, I'm assuming that when you, right after you make your piezo or your ferroelectric material and you cool it down, all of its dipoles are r randomly oriented to reduce the free energy in the material. So when you cool it down, it's not going to have a single pole uh, state. Rather, it's going to be all these ran all the domains in the material are going to be randomly oriented. Therefore, the macroscopic polarization is zero. <laughs> Because all, but however, if you go inside each unit cell or each domain region, you'll find a polarization existing, spontaneous polarization, which is the, one of the definitions of a, P, a ferroelectric material. It has to have a, or one of the requirements, it has to have a spontaneous polarization, 
uh, which can occur in non-ferroelectric materials, but the difference between fer in ferroelectric and non-ferroelectric is that you can switch that polarization with an applied stress or electric field. Okay, so what happens is that we started a zero, po zero polarization, assume that macroscopically measured. As we increase this electric field, you know, I mentioned we have this linear effect here, but what happens is that this this curve picks up. And this curve flattens out. What's exactly what's happening? Okay, picks it picks up and it flattens out. And uh, just uh, bear with me with the diagrams. You can look up the ferroelectric hysteresis online. It'll give you a lot cleaner pictures of what this is supposed to look like. But let's just try to explain. So this is sort of the linear region right here, where your material is behaving like a uh, linear dielectric material, not so exciting, you can't tell if it's ferroelectric or not. But then you're going to see this other region here. Okay. And this other region, what is it? It is, I mean, we mentioned in the ferroelectric materials, as you keep increasing the electric field, you're, what's going to happen is that these do domains or these polarizations which are randomly oriented they're going to start switching and when they switch they bring a large amount of change in polarization because with that applied electric field if you switch this something the polarization looks like this so for example if we have a single domain or a single unit cell so draw it as a square and its polarization is facing downward and if we also polarization, spontaneous polarization or whatever, uh, this polarization is facing downward without an applied electric field because it has a spontaneous polarization. But if we apply an electric field in the opposite direction, what's going to happen? This polarization is going to shrink in the direction of the polar, in the direction of the field, and therefore charges will develop uh, in the material. So right, positive charges will develop here, and negative charges will develop here. But if we then and you keep increasing this electric field, this polarization will then switch, and it'll switch to the opposite direction. And when that switch happens, an abrupt change in the polarization occurs. And because that abrupt change is not happening all the time for every single one of these domains in the system, it's not happening all at the same time. It's sort of a gradual process. Different, um, uh, different you could say different domains are oriented in different ways according to the polarization. So let's say some dom one domain is pointed like this and you're applying electric field like that. So it's going to want to switch up, up like that. However, if you have another domain which is pointed, let's say like uh, completely opposite, it'll have a different electric field required to switch it. So the so electric field required to switch all of these uh, domains in the system, uh, so uh, that's called the coercive field. And we'll go over that in a, in a few moments here. So as you reach, keep increasing electric field after this switching session, then you again, you would hit a, this shouldn't be as sharp, but this should be, this happens, is, is and then we reach another straight line point. So we have one straight line point here, one curved sort of portion, nonlinear portion there, and another straight line portion here. And this portion there is the dielectric response, is, the int is more or less the intrinsic dielectric response. And this actually happens is because all the polarization vectors, they've switched as much as they could. You end up then with a single domain state. And now you're not, now the um, contribution toward the characteristics of the material or the property of the material, you know, change in polarization with applied electric field is not going to change as much because you're only getting contribution uh, from this uh, from this uh, intrinsic response, whereas the domain while switching, this abrupt change in the domain, uh, in the polarization orientation is no longer having a uh, is having a small or insignificant uh, contribution toward the properties. And this region right here, this low region, it's sh it's sharper than this high region. And the reason why this this is this also this low region also has domain while switching, but it's happening in such a fashion where it's linear and it's largely reversible. So this keeps the response linear. However, in this region, we're actually switching domains. Therefore, it is accompanying, and we're switching a large amount of them. And so, therefore, it is accompanied with a large, you know, sort of very steep change in the polarization for an applied electric field. So. Now that we have applied such a large electric field to this material, 
and we are reducing you know the electric field look what happens we go up this way and we go back down and strangely enough we don't go back down the same route and the reason we don't go back down the same route is because that we have switched permanently some of these domains there originally it was randomly oriented one is here one was there one was there one was there one was down but then in the end we have them all sort of after applying this electric field going up let's say we have all them all almost like pointing upward and some many of these switched permanently that that's the definition of a ferroelectric material if you apply a large electric, electric field a, re, a realizable one in real life then it'll switch and then the polarization orientation the small and it'll sort of remember that electric field that you put on it so as you decrease this polarization it will retain some it will retain that polarization and then it will dip down a little bit so this sort of um if you want to draw like sort of like a straight line here let's just erase a little bit um this will return down and it'll sort of dip down here so where this intrinsic portion meets up with um if you draw a straight line from this intrinsic portion you draw a straight line and you get to about here right this is not a very really straight line the straight line should be taught first how to draw them then fair electricity should be learned or according to some people i say that learn for electricity first and then learn how to draw a straight line later okay so this is uh two points here so this point right here where if you drew a line uh, a straight line regression from the intrinsic sort of portion then you would get then if you hit that against the uh the y-intercept of the polarization you'd get something called a spontaneous polarization which would be what we would expect from the polarization response of an intrinsic unit cell uh, which we are applying an electric field in the direction of polarization so it can't switch however what happens is that as we reduce the electric field some of these domains switch back because uh, some of them just simply can't be switched uh, completely so therefore uh, we we call, we have this actual the realized polarization which we experience, which is called the uh, 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 remnant polarization. So P R remnant polarization and P S spontaneous polarization. So as we keep decreasing this electric field, okay, we again we see this phenomenon happening. So we have this, you know, sort of linear region here, and we have this domain wall switching portion here, and then we have this other, the sort of linear region which occurs uh, here. So this is another intrinsic region. You can draw a dot here, uh, and probably another dot there. So this would be the sort of like a linear region right here, and and as you keep reversing electric field the domain switch again so now we're now let's say we're in the negative side so before we apply an electric field going positive and therefore all these domains switched up some of them switch back as we reduce the electric field back to zero but now in the second case we're applying this negative electric field with respect to these spawn uh, these polarized or oriented uh domains which are orient whose spontaneous polarizations are oriented opposite eventually what you're going to get is these polarizations are going to want to switch just like it switched originally and therefore we have the exact opposite trend happening on the other side of the negative electric field side and as we come back we are going to not we're going to retain some of that polarization because now we switch them permanently and and as i mentioned some of them will be relaxed you know as we get back so this is also a uh, remnant polarization if you drew like a straight line I'm not drawing the best graph here, but it's, it's good enough to tell. That's that's a remnant polarization there, and spontaneous polarization again. If you drew the straight line, usually if you want to draw it a tad bit better, we would. Um, I would say that we could draw like this here, going there. This is exaggeration, just to show. Uh, okay, so this would be the straight line, and this would be the spontaneous polarization. We would then continue here. 
and then this would come back as we as we keep increasing our electric field this would come back and this would again uh join uh with then this would again